The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. No, no, there's beauty in a unity. Hello and welcome to the final pre-World Cup 2018 podcast that we are doing here on Soccer to the Max, and that was the Coca-Cola anthem for the World Cup 2018 by Jason Derulo Colors. I don't know how often you'll hear that. Probably just in the Coca-Cola commercials. I doubt that Fox or I uh, know Telemundo won't be uh, using it that much. But it's decent. At least I thought anyway. But so what we're doing here on this episode is if you've listened to any of our other previews, we let you know that we weren't doing predictions on any of those. So I apologize if you wanted some big, deep breakdown or whatever on this show, we're not really doing that. What we're doing here is just basically kind of doing a little sort of review of what we said in the other previews. So if you want more of a deeper look at those teams, you need to go listen to our other preview shows. Uh, That's what those are there for. And then kind of discussing their chances of progressing out of the group, some players maybe to look at, and then most of all, doing our predictions of who actually gets out of the group each Each one of us will be doing that. We'll also go through the knockout round, who we got going through there all the way to the final, who wins, and maybe some awards as well. And I'm not doing this on myself. Of course, my my cohorts here, that this show wouldn't work without them. Uh, Mr. Eric Watkins and Rachel McCrigger. Guys, it's almost here. Literally, by the time you're hearing this, we're in World Cup week officially. My country, my beautiful home country. We are hosting the biggest tournament. This is probably not our year, but we are very excited. And, oh, the World Cup being in Russia, it's a dream come true. So excited. Especially the fact that Russia now gets an excuse to rebound for what the U.S. did to them in rugby what was it, 64-13 today? Hashtag Summer Series. And yeah, this means that for the next month, don't expect me to do a damn thing much at work. Just saying. Yeah, Eric, I kind of have it set up with my crew at work that if we're not doing anything, they will be okay with me watching some of the games. But yeah, let's see how well that goes because... I'm sure as soon as some of the management find out that that's happening there, they'll make sure that we don't. (laughs) So we'll we'll see how that goes. But yeah, so just to let everybody know, we will be doing World Cup dailies once the tournament begins, starting on Thursday the 14th. We will, at some point, even if it's before we go to bed or it might technically be the next early in the morning or whatever, There will be some kind of analysis on the one or two or three games that happened that day. There will mostly be three games for the majority of the group stage. It will get to four when they get to the uh, games that they have to play at the same time. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, I guess. Just, yeah, we'll be doing this all for you, for you to get analysis of what we think of the teams. Of course, you can let us know too with comments or anything either on Spreaker or YouTube or whatever. So get in there and let us know what you thought of these games that we get to watch every four years. And let's begin group a, which we got the really bad news after we did the preview that of Mo Salah injured at the champions league final. He's still in a rush to try to play more than that final group game against Saudi Arabia, but it's looking like that's still the most likely situation for him and Egypt, which is 
really bad for Egypt's chances because they rely heavily on him. You have the home country, Russia, which will have, as Rachel noted, not only herself but that entire country behind them. If they can get the big win in Saudi Arabia, that could make it even more of an issue for Egypt because that country is going to be even more fervent with World Cup fever come that second game. And, of course, you got former World Cup champions Uruguay, who have the best talent in the group, but you never know. Sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. So, Rachel, what do you think? What's happening here? Well, I would be an absolute heathen, and I think I would be on Vladimir Putin's no-fly list if I didn't put Russia advancing somewhere in this group. So I have Russia actually winning the group. I feel like when it comes to the World Cup, there's just a different fire under you. And when you're hosting the World Cup, and I mean with all the ticket sales that have soared through the country, I think that that's going to help motivate Um, I have Egypt in second place advancing. Uh, No Mo Salah, no problem. I mean, I think, you know, the the, uh, medical officials are saying he will be back in time for that last match, and I think that's going to be huge for them. Um, Uruguay in third place, Saudi Arabia finishing out the group in last place. Wow, Rachel oh, already delivering the shocker of no I don't hold why. back, y'all. Rooting for the home country. So, Rachel went homer. That's okay. You know, it's not like Russia perhaps may not host another World Cup for a long time. So, uh, especially if certain things go down. But we'll see. We t- so, Rachel, this may be Rachel's only chance of being able to, to put the home country first and getting through. So, I don't blame her at all. Eric, are you going to go this bold and say no um, Uruguay going through? Uh, n- nah. I, I, I will say this, though. Ever since you had this version of a format where you had the group stage and either another group stage, a knockout round, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Go, so you're going all the way back to 1950. No home country has failed to advance out of that initial group stage, save for South Africa in 2010. I think that trend continues. However, I personally see Uruguay... A team that has really come close these past couple of tournaments. I really think they're setting up an itching to win. I have Uruguay winning the group. Russia second. Egypt, I think they're going to get a boost with the Mo Salah coming back. That last group stage match. But it won't be enough. They finish third. Saudi Arabia or the Cellar Dwellers. Yeah, I think that's going to be the problem for Egypt is that, okay, maybe you get a draw with Uruguay. Maybe. Or maybe Uruguay just scores two goals and Egypt can't score. And then Russia with being at home and everything and possibly already having the three points in the bag, they go ahead and just go for the qualifications so that the match against Uruguay isn't that big a deal. And Egypt is sitting there at zero points and the Saudi Arabia match is basically a just, hey, Salah, get your experience in the World Cup. That's what that match could wind up being and it may not mean absolutely anything. And honestly, that match against Saudi Arabia, Egypt could probably win without Salah. They really need him for the other two games that he's probably going to miss. And I think that's going to be an issue because Egypt does bunker down anyway. It's possible they could park the bus and they have some other players that can possibly go on the counterattack. But I I just see it very difficult for them uh, between those two teams that have to play first uh, to be able to do anything. 
I think Russia takes advantage of being at home. They have, I think they've become a much better team since the team that we saw at the Confederations Cup. Uh, some of these players are in much better form. I think that they can de- they'll they definitely get the three points to start us all off. And then after that, it's it's whatever happens. Uruguay, I think it's going to be one of the dark horses to, for this entire World Cup. Uh, you have Suarez and Cavani up front. That's going to get you a lot of things that many people don't have. You have two proven goal scorers. You have a guy that can get them service. You have a you have a defense that is very reliable. That's what you need, a solid team. And a solid team that could go far if things go their way. So for me, I think unless, you know, Suarez has a goal drought or something like that, Uruguay definitely going to be in first, possibly with all nine points, at least with seven, I feel like. And Russia is going to be getting in second. Who knows? I feel bad for Egypt if Salah was around. Maybe we really are talking about the fa- of Russia possibly being the second team. Or second host country doesn't have them get out of the group stage. But I just feel like now you have no excuses, Russia. You better get there. So I think that does it for Group A. All of us have Russia getting out. Rachel has the shock with Egypt still getting out regardless. We'll see how that goes uh, for Rachel there. You never know. Some, it's a World Cup. Crazy things happen. Uh, group Crazy B. things have happened, like Russia getting a World Cup bid. Oh, well, that doesn't surprise me. FIFA is so corrupt. And but perhaps, but we, we love Russia on this podcast, so. We do. Uh, I like vodka. And one of my finest moments is with a fair Russian woman. That's <laughs> all I'm going to say right now. We'll have to see if uh, if on Thursday we're talking about another big shocker, depending on what happens in that World Cup vote. So, In fact, one of the countries that's involved in that World Cup vote, Morocco, is part of this Group B, along with the Republic of Iran... Or the I what is this the Independent Republic of Iran? Is that what it's called now? Yeah, Islamic Republic of oh, Islam. Iran. Okay, Islamic Republic of Iran, I'm sorry. And Portugal and Spain, of course, Spain former World Cup winners. Portugal, the current European championship holders. And then you have Morocco and Iran. Listen, uh, I think if you're looking for upsets Iran and Morocco could possibly do one on Portugal. Uh, I think Spain knows exactly what they went through four years ago. They have a much more well-rounded team. A team that has full of young talent. And not so much older talent. You have an Iniesta that's going in as basically possibly last run of games period. And or well, no, I see he's not. He's signed for like a Japanese team, right? For a team in Japan, he's I, he's done with Barcelona, but he he signed with uh, a team there. And the thing with Portugal is it's Ronaldo, and then the team is just we saw what they were at the Euros. There's nothing about this team right now. It makes me feel like they're going to be flying high. It's really going to have to be Ronaldo taking on his shoulders, and I wonder how much he can do. We saw with Real Madrid, he's not an everyday starter anymore. He's he's still having the problems where he's having personal issues with you know more rumors coming out about him wanting to leave Madrid again, especially with Neymar wanting to come. And I think Morocco has a sneaky team that they can attack. They can also defend. Iran's probably going to be defending a lot more. But I feel like Morocco has a point to prove as well. I'm going with Spain getting all nine points. And Morocco pulls the shock and winds up in second, beating Portugal. Mm. I see where you're coming from. I understand it, but, and especially when you're talking about the Real Madrid situation, they're not going to get rid of him. They're already saying, okay, 
you can have Gareth Bale. Yeah, it's going to take about $260 million, but he'll be yours. And then we'll fork over three hundred and ten for Neymar, which again, Neymar, I hope you went back and you listened to that. Let us talk you up a little bit. We'll raise that price no matter what they say, but that's beside the point. I think with all of that and a combination that uh, if the announcement comes the 13th goes the wrong way, then I'm really going to need my passport so I can make a impromptu flight to Switzerland, set a couple people straight. Really, the Iberian Derby is going to decide how this group goes down. I do agree with you. I think Spain does get the nine points. But I think Portugal with, if not six, maybe four and a little bit of luck with goal difference, comes second. I do think Morocco is going to give up a nice fight and come in third. And Iran, I don't see a whole, whole lot with them. I have them in last. What do you think, Rachel? Um, I think this group is kind of tricky. I mean, everyone looks to Portugal and sees them as like, oh, well, they're going to advance. Well, like we said in the group preview show, everyone thought that in 2014 and the United States edged them out. Um, I think I, I agree with you guys when you say that Spain gets all nine points. Um, I don't see anybody in this group really topping them. I think Portugal might give them a good run for their money. Um, This might upset a little group of Portuguese fans, but I think Morocco is going to advance out of this group in the number two slot. I just think that no matter what, whether the vote on the 13th goes in their favor or not, uh, no matter what, it's going to light a fire under Morocco it's either going to light a fire is in the sense of you picked us as the host. This is what you're going to get. And it's going to light a fire if they don't get picked as you didn't pick us. This is what you're missing out on. So I think that they're going to get out of the second group. I, I just Portugal always is hyped up, but they always end up letting themselves and their own country down. I don't see Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal advancing. And then I have Portugal in third place and Iran in fourth place. Well, there you go. I just, man. I love some my angry upsets. Portugal fans. I love my upsets. Like, March Madness is the worst time of the year and the best time of the year for me. So <laughs> don't yeah. don't 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 no that no it's too soon. If she's Wait. doing it with the World Cup, can you imagine what it's like for March Madness? That bracket yeah. must look crazy. Yeah, it's like a it's, bomb exploded. Yeah, it's it's March Madness, especially what happened at base. It's too soon. It's way too soon for me. I mm-mm. oh well, maybe a little bit too soon, but it's never too soon to talk about. France in a World Cup. They have tremendous World Cup history, of course, being winners in 1998. Uh, you know, we just watched France take on a younger U.S. men's national team, and we'll talk about that in our final regular show before we get into the into the World Cup. But France also has uh, Australia to deal with as well, who have made it a habit of making World Cups a lot recently. Peru, who got great news after we did the preview that Paulo Guerrero for sure is playing. This helps them immensely to have their captain and best ever scorer with them. And Denmark, who just got through beating Mexico 2-0 and has the whole everybody in Mexico going nuts right now. Uh, So... We know what these teams are. You have two European teams that have a lot of history in tournaments. Denmark has really come on as of late. Peru got some great news, and they've shown it in these friendlies. Australia is an anomaly, but 
man, when you're really counting on Tim Cahill to be doing most of your work still, that's frightening. Not saying that Tim Cahill's great, but man, that that's a lot to rely on a 38-year-old man. So is this a done and dusted thing? For France to be topping this group, Eric, or any for chance of an per- upset? N- not for France, no. I think, uh, and I will touch on this briefly, their friendly today showed a lot, but I think it showed more for the U.S. than for France. But even with that, I don't see them not winning this group. But I do think the Herrero news will boost Peru into second place. Denmark, while again, they have a lot of the capability. We mentioned them beating Mexico. I see them as third. And Australia, I mean, come on. My Bulldogs have a better chance of making the top eight in the Australian Football League this year and getting a finals run then Australia has a chance of maybe even getting a point in this tournament. Sorry, Socceroos, but, um, yeah, you made your priorities very clear. Well, what do you think, uh, Eric? I mean, is uh, how much of a battle is Peru and Denmark going to be in for that second spot? I I see that actually being pretty close. This could be another one of those to where whoever wins that Peru-Denmark match is sealing up second place. And then that could maybe... Uh, I really can't see a draw out of that, so I think there's going to be a clear second place. I don't see that on goal difference. Yeah, this it makes it so difficult uh, for me to choose. So I'm gonna leave it to Rachel. To you have another upset in you here? Maybe, of course. I mean, who do you think you're talking to? Hair flip. Um, <laughs> so... I love the fact that she just. Said hair flip, like <laughs> because you guys can't see me, you gotta like hair flip. I mean, yeah. my hair's grown, so I can do it. Hair flip. <laughs> um, I mean, if so you're about the hair battle. You're yeah, I mean, Eric it's has on that. Eric. <laughs> it's on Eric. I mean, I've already. We're we're gonna have a talk because I want to straighten your hair one day. <laughs> All right, you ain't ready. I'm just saying this. You ain't ready. <laughs> you know who ain't ready? Peru and Australia, because I do not have them advancing. I have France winning the whole thing, even though the United States beat them today. I mean, didn't beat them, but drew them today. Cha-ching! And I have Denmark taking that second seed. And the reason why I have that is because I'm a little biased. Andreas Christensen, Yannick Vestergaard. Two of their best center backs, the two great Danes, both have played for my favorite club team, Borussia Mönchengladbach, in Germany. Andreas Christensen now plays for Chelsea. Yannick Vastegard is still, thankfully, there. Um, I just don't... I think D- Denmark has a really good defense. Um, I think they have some pretty good attacking players. And... I would like to see Peru move on just because it would be like nice to see a South American team. But I, I just, I think Peru is going to finish in third, Australia in fourth. Sorry, Socceroos. And um, France and Denmark are moving on. Yeah, this is where it starts getting very difficult to see who goes through. And I don't know. We got to get to the next group in just a little bit. That's even worse. But, for me, I, I feel like regardless of what we saw in this friendly, we have to remember those are friendlies. People don't play to their highest potential in friendlies. Let's let's not overdo it with that. Uh, you also got to think about it might mean more for the U.S. players, those younger U.S. players, than, than for those French players that are just like, okay, let's try to not get hurt before we get to the World Cup. Uh, supposedly Giroud is fine, by the way. Nothing wrong with him after the the injury. 
he got in the second half. But for me, this comes down to France. I could, I think it's if anybody gets a any points off France, that person's going in second, regardless. But I think France is going to get all nine points. Uh, they're just that good. They have so many talented players. Uh, it's it's a who's who of who you who you want to pick. I do think what we saw with Hugo Lloris though, that is not new. We've seen that with Lloris. If there's going to be a thing, is France going down to somebody getting a crazy goal or you know a goal happening right at the last minute, something like that. That could really do them in, say, in the knockout round uh, more than here. Denmark has a fantastic team centered around Christian Eriksen. I don't... It. I, I think they definitely are good enough to get out of here. I just feel like Peru has more of a... It's been so long since they've been here. They have got the that feeling of have of just like bliss right now of getting Guerrero back. I think that they have a, they may not have what Denmark has in, in the talent and the players. I think Peru has the heart. I think they have that will. And I think they're going to have a little bit of luck go their way and they get out, whether it's, you know, goal difference or whatever it is. I think, Peru is is getting in second. So everybody's either in stunned silence or I don't know, nobody's saying anything. No, I, so I, I I agree with you. I mean, I I think Joris or Lord uh, he is going to at least I would hope straighten things out because yeah, that was pretty fluky, but. I counted on more inspiration and momentum for Peru rather than anything else. I'm right there with you, though. Well, let's move on to something that's even harder to pick. Group D, the closest thing I think we had to like a group of death in this tournament with Argentina, two-time World Cup champions. They were the World Cup finalists last year. Lost to Germany in the end. Iceland, we know what they did in the Euros. You know, England fans are still smarting from that. Uh, Croatia have been, you know, t- a team since 1998 that have been, you've got to pay attention to them when they play in big tournaments. And Nigeria, who are very, they are one of the formidable African teams, have a lot of history with Argentina as well, being in groups with them many times. I think this one's a a crapshoot. I think there's a lot of variables here that can happen. All these teams are talented. And and Argentina also perhaps doesn't have one of the best teams that they've had in a long time. So it really is on Messi and then making sure the collective work with him here. What do you think, Rachel? Are are you going the expected, or you, or you got something something crazy up your sleeve here? Um, I have Argentina winning the group as much as I hate it because I don't like Lionel Messi. I respect the absolute hell out of his game, but I just don't like him personally. Maybe it's an upset, but I'm kind of riding the hype train, and I have Iceland making it out of the group in second place. I think the team that would give them a run for their money for that would be Nigeria, who I have in third place, and then Croatia in fourth. Um, If you want to tweet me and let me know how crazy I am, go ahead, at Rachel McCrigger. But um, I just, I'm really riding this Iceland hype train. I think that the whole thing about them not being there. And this is like the, this is their first time on the world stage. I think that's going to carry them a long way. I think there's a lot of momentum in this group. I just want to see them win like a a few matches here so badly. Yeah. uh, I think that 
Iceland is going to be very interesting as far as if they play with that same passion, the same sort of camaraderie, togetherness, all that we saw at the Euros, they're going to be difficult to beat. I think all these matches could definitely become a grind. Uh, Argentina and Nigeria might just be like loads of fun. Who knows? But I think it's just Iceland's going to be that one outlier of, man, if they get a win somewhere, watch out. You know, be careful about what you get here. I think, for me, I'm going to go a different route, though. I'm going to go probably a route that people are going to think I'm crazy for this. But uh, I think definitely Argentina is going to get through winning the group. I think Messi knows this perhaps might be his final tournament. I don't know. I mean, he'll be 35 at the next one, so it's still a chance he could play. But with the way he's already retired once, let's say he has another heartbreaker. Perhaps he just, you know, doesn't have it to to want to go go down like that again. But I think with the talent they have in this group, with uh, Sampaioli being their coach now, they have a better system of play that kind of suits Messi, more Barcelona style. I could see a team drawing with them, uh, but I I feel like they're gonna get. Uh, nine points where I'm going to differ is look, the Nigeria is going to have a a really hard time playing defense. They don't, they have a really young defense that's in front of a goalkeeper that uh, we don't know much about, but honestly, I feel like that attacking core in front of them and the two defensive midfielders that you're going to be employing to try to keep the defense from, having too much go against them is going to be so lethal that they're just going to, they're going to, you know, that game against Croatia could be like three, two or something. They could, they could rack up a bunch of goals and that's what you need when you get into some of these tight spots. I think it could come down to, you know, getting the, the once again, goal difference. And if I'm looking at a team that might do that, might score goals, I think it's Nigeria I hate that Nigeria winds up in second, getting through. I'm going to say Iceland gets in third, and Croatia is last. Hmm. Interesting. I'll say interesting for the very least, but um, I got to counter that argument a little bit with a Ooh. 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 Mm-hmm. You're going to be hearing Are you that barking? Out. Are you clapping? Or... Yes, you can't oh. see me, but I'm doing the full on Iceland Viking chant. Oh, okay. It's not quite the skull, but it, it was adopted into that. Anyways, God, this needs to be visual right now. <laughs> I Maybe see... we should have thought of doing that. Maybe. Yeah, I see Iceland. Getting through, I see Argentina winning, but I both see them on fairly level points getting through this group. I think that surprisingly with Argentina, they're, uh, as you say, they're collective being a little bit off from their normal tournaments trying to redeem themselves for their failure in Brazil and trying to make sure that Messi still stays with the team and doesn't decide to rage quit again. But I think Iceland, based on what they did at the Euros, I think that they're in a position to only just get better and further prove to the world, yes, we have a system and we produce quality football and talent. It's going to be kind of sad for Nigeria because I see them just barely missing out. Not goal difference barely, but just a point or two. And then Croatia, from a team that had a chance to win it all in 98 to where they are now, it's a bit of a fall. I see them as last. Fair enough. Fair enough on that one. And this this is going to be one of the hardest groups to predict because so many things uh, can happen. 
And, you know, especially based on the schedule that Nigeria doesn't play Argentina until the end. So much there. Uh, Argent- Iceland plays Argentina first. So depending on what happens there, you could technically... Maybe maybe Iceland gets a little bummed. Who knows? Who knows? It's there's a th- that's why I love groups like this because even though it looks like this on paper, right? It may not be like this. We could just see two teams just absolutely whoop everybody, and, and it doesn't matter. So, but right now we're giving uh, teams benefit of the doubt, and I think Group E is possibly going to be similar in that way. You have Brazil, of course, five-time World Cup champions lose in that final last year to to Germany uh 7-1 which is freaking nuts to think about um Switzerland of course have been they they were terrific in European qualifying they barely got through but that's all you need cuz now they get to show that that guile and that grit and you know they can score as well uh, something that I think they've been a bit lacking in the last few tournaments. Costa Rica, we know what they did last time. Can they do it again, though? Even with the same core. We've seen this happen before, right? U.S., 2002. What happened in 2006? They absolutely just bombed. So, could happen again. And Serbia, they're a bit of an anomaly as well because... They're a rough, organized team, but will they be able to score goals? Maybe they don't need to score goals because they're just going to, you know, defense you to death. But, yeah, I, th- I think Brazil is ready. They have played amazingly. They were the first team to qualify from actually playing uh, and they did it with ten goals to spare, and or ten points, and I think ten more goals than uh, the next team. They are got everything going right now. Neymar is, you know, he's trying to get into Real Madrid, but he's going to want to show why. And you've got so much talent everywhere for Brazil. I just, I can't see it. Nine points for those guys. It's going to be a battle for second between the other three teams. And I've changed my pick from the pictures I sent you guys a few days ago when we first chose our knocker on. I think I'm going to go with Switzerland in second. Uh, I I like the makeup of this team. Uh, Shakiri is in a much better place right now. I, they they have more goals in them right now. They can also just if they have to grit and grind and get on defending. Uh, they can do that as well. Look, Costa Rica can do the same thing, and Costa Rica has the best goalkeeper in the world in Kaylor Navas. But I, I just feel like people will have figured out their system this time, and it may no may not go as swimmingly as it did last time for them, and they'll wind up third, and Serbia gets in fourth. Hmm. Hmm. This makes my pick a teeny bit more weirder and outlandish, but I am going to stick with it. Brazil, especially after the memories of 7-1 to one and how now this is twice as their history, they failed to lift the trophy on home soil. What did they do the next chance they get? They go out and they try to tear it up. Neymar's back. Full shop window, trying to see what he can do. I think he's going to be insane this tournament. I have Brazil getting all nine points. As far as who gets second, I'm sticking with my prediction. I do think that people are going to figure out Los Ticos' system. And Switzerland, for as good as they are, when it comes to the main stage... They just don't bring in 100%. I think if you're looking at another one of those surprise teams, I'm putting it this way, Serbia is one of them. I have them coming through in second. 
Costa Rica third, Switzerland I've gotten last. Dang. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, Rachel? It's upset time. Well, not really. I have Brazil claiming all three points because I just, I'm not betting against Neymar, not betting against Thiago Silva, who is one of my favorite players of all time. Um, I I have to pick Costa Rica in second just because I appreciate what they've done um, in recent years. I love their head coach, Oscar Ramirez. Um, I feel like a few friends from Costa Rica would get mad if I didn't pick them. Um, I don't know if they can have the same Cinderella story run that they had in 2014, but it would be interesting to watch. Uh, When it comes between Switzerland and Serbia, I don't know who I trust, so I'm going to just go with the familiarity and pick Switzerland because I know more players on their team than Serbia, and then I'm going to have Serbia last. So not too many upsets, but you bet that there's upsets coming up, folks. All right, so Group F. Moosey and along. Germany World Cup champions are in this group along with Mexico. The CONCACAF, you know, historically just big major team for this tournament. Sweden, no slot on, no problem. They're key, they're, they just keep going and, and the Republic of Korea. Uh, I mean, we talked about this in a preview. I feel like this is a two-team group with Sweden possibly being able to sneak in there, and I just feel like Korea just doesn't have enough. Uh, Hun Sun Min, or Sun Hun Min, I think it's going to probably have a few goals and, and, get, and get himself uh, prove why he deserves to be where he is. But it, I, I just don't think it's going to be enough when it comes to the rest of this. Uh, the uh, the thing with Mexico is Juan Carlos Osorio. He is such a freaking outlier. Like, because of depending on what team he puts out that day. <laughs> my view, Mexico just might be bad that day and <laughs> might get beat. It's, that's the problem. If, if uh, Mexico had a much more dependable coach, I'd say... Hell, they could win this group because Germany doesn't have one of the strongest teams. They had the the team that they had in twenty sixteen or twenty fourteen much stronger than the team I think they they have right now, and uh, they have some players that aren't in the best form. They have players that are coming back from injury. I still want to say Demonshaft get it done. Navy, it's with seven points. Navy, it's with six. But they find a way to top the group. And I'm going to give the edge to our CONCACAF rivals here in Mexico. But I don't feel good about this group at all. I don't feel good about either one of these teams. Uh. All I'm going to say as far as this one, Javol, Demon Shaft! <laughs> they're not going to do what, say, the golden generation of Spain did, winning, you know, back to back to back sort of tournaments. But I do think, look, they basically sent their JV team to the Confederations Cup, and look what happened. I like Joachim Love, even though, let's face it, you're going to see that picture and the gifs of him and the bench and the fingers way too many times throughout this tournament again. But that very strange quirk aside, he knows what he's doing and he can get the best, even if it's not the strongest team. I have them first and... I think Osorio isn't going to screw up too bad. Now, it's going to be a close shave. This one could be another goal difference situation. 
But I have Mexico going through, Sweden third, and a re- Republic of Korea. Look, if I knew Korean, I would call you whipping boys in Korean, but I don't, so I'm just going to do it in English. Sorry. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, Rachel? No upset again. Germany, I have taken the whole group. Like I, like Sean said, I don't know if I see them taking all nine points. I feel like they might slip up against Mexico somehow. Um, I, I really want to give Mexico second place, so I'm doing it just because it's Mexico. It's Chicharito. It's Juan Carlos Osorio. Um, Sweden's in third just because of Gustav Svensson from Seattle Sounders. And then Korea Republic, I'm sorry. I just don't think you have enough um, bite. I think you have more bark. So you're in fourth place. It seems about right. But again, this is like another group that I think is going to be fun to watch because the Juan Carlos Osorio factor, the what Germany team do we get? I think we also need to think about the Confederations Cup. You know, some teams try harder than other teams uh, for that tournament. You know, I think Germany, again, was just trying to prove how good they are. But I just, I don't think it's the same Mexico team. I think Portugal was, you know, they are what they were. Uh, so, you know, but we will, uh, we don't have to talk about that anymore because now the real deal is happening. And one of the teams that I think people have been waiting for to become the real deal for a while now is Belgium. They have this golden generation of players. They have this absolutely talented squad that is there. Uh, sometimes, uh, Roberto Martinez has done them in with weird tactics, uh, but in qualifying, they didn't have the hardest of qualifying groups, so it's hard to take a lot from that. Let's see what happens. And this group isn't the hardest either. They have one bogey team in England, but also a lot of these teams, pl- a lot of these players play in England, so they know these players. So I wonder how difficult of a group game will be. And then by then, also, those two teams could just go have a laugh and have a draw, and it not mean a damn thing uh, because they play the two easier teams at the beginning. Uh, that being said, I definitely think this is a two-team group. No doubt about that. Tunisia lost their best player uh, to injury. Panama, look, I think they're going to try. I think they're going to work hard. I think you're going to see some of that heart in there. But I think some of these players are too old. We've seen a lot of these strikers just absolutely disappear in games. And I think uh, for a large part, Panama is just happy to be here. Uh, it's between Belgium and England for me. I think Belgium is going to score enough goals that by goal difference they get through uh, ahead of England, uh, Belgium in first, England second. I'll give Panama a freaking bone and say they beat Tunisia and get in third and Tunisia last. Hmm. Hmm. Well, folks, let me tell you. When it comes to this group, it's going to be blood pudding, spotted dick, and the finest waffles for everybody. England and Belgium, I do agree, are going to go through. Look, I was about to say, hey, your finest English breakfast, but not a big fan of those. But I, the one difference that I do see, I'm with Sean with you just about the entire way. Panama third, Tunisia last. But I think that goal difference is going to be switched. I have England winning the group on that factor and Belgium coming in second. Because while Belgium has the golden generation, England wants to shut everybody up about, oh, you only won in 66, you do it to do crazy times. No. I don't know, but if I'm England, I kind of want to get in second because I avoid Brazil. Well, so. I, I agree. I agree with you, but at the same time, that's just going to be the way that things just kind of crumble. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. We'll see how it goes. I mean, yeah, definitely you want to win the group. Tensei in the best position, and you never know. Some these knockout round games, 
they a lot of times they don't go the way you think. So you never know who you're. You think you know who you're gonna play in the knock around, and a lot of times doesn't wind up that way. Uh Rachel, are you in the same wavelength here? Oh. Uh... No, I don't think so. Um, I don't have England advancing to Ooh, the wait, shock what? of many. I don't have England advancing. Okay, this is the biggest, like, what's going on here? Are we... Do I need another? Okay, hair flip. Um, so I have Belgium winning the group, um, and that's because – a lot of the reason is, well, yes, they're a great team. They have great players. But after the World Cup in 2014, when I was a lowly little about to be a senior in high school and could barely cook for myself, I said, I am never eating a Belgian waffle again. And I ate waffles the next day. <laughs> so I feel like this is my revenge and I have to finally pay it back. So I have Belgium winning the group. God, those waffles are so good. And... My God. Um, I have Panama being in second place. I don't know why, <laughs> um, but I just, CONCACAF maybe? I have to give my allegiance to CONCACAF, but yeah, I have Panama in second place, England in third, and then, of course, last but not least, Tunisia in fourth. So bring on the hate, y'all. Rachel, did you hijack my root recipe? Come on now. That no, it's no. Just a smeared off ice. I mean, I'm all for all three CONCACAF teams getting through, like Rachel has. Yeah, I'm cray cray. But, bro, it's not happening. Listen, Sean, it's the World Cup. You don't know what's going to happen. Is today. June 28th. No, it is not. Anything could happen. I mean, if today There's wasn't... some things that are just formalities, okay? I mean, if the, today oh, wasn't 28th, please. that wouldn't be bad because I would have hopefully some birthday stories afterwards and uh, <laughs> a couple other things going on, but, but, but still... That's Gentlemen, no... you are talking to your resident Russian... You know how crazy us Russian people are? Case in point. We're crazy. And this pic shows it. And also, when Panama does advance from the group, I'm coming down to Florida in November. So um, I'll take drink orders. I, I, you know what? That's fair. If Panama advances from the group, we owe her a drink. You heard it, folks. Right on the podcast. You heard it. Sean said it. Ain't no going back. I don't think Eric <laughs> can disagree with me here. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm going to do you one better. I don't give a damn how many Russian car crash <laughs> videos I've seen, how many times I've heard the phrase Sota Bayut and have wondered what the hell that means. If you show your face down here and Panama has advanced out of the group, I'm getting you a drink and I'm getting you a cookie or something. <laughs> that, that. Mark I this love- Whether that Sir- has something in it. <laughs> We will not discuss in here, but, you know. I love cookies, though. <laughs> yeah, cookies are great. Uh, but, yeah, hair flip, Panama, don't let me down, Panama. I can't say that too loudly, and I might come in here and be like, oh, somebody's giving out cookies? So, all right, let's 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 get to this final group where we get to the knockout round. Group H, which is the most what-the-F group is happening uh, perhaps a group of life, if you want to call it that. You have Poland, who won their group. Robert Lewandowski technically had the most goals in qualifying with 16. Senegal, who had a heck of a run in Africa qualifying as well. Colombia, who qualified in the last day of South American qualifying, but they have a very talented uh, group of players as well. And Japan, who come in with probably one of the least talented squads. Uh, in their tournament's history, but again, none of these teams are called really powerhouses or anything, so things can go your way, and you never know. Eric, what you got happening? Okay. This might sound weird. This might sound very weird. 
but there's a little bit of my heart going into this one. Number one, I've got Colombia winning the group, especially if Hamas Rodriguez has just another one of those, hey, yes, I'm here, I'm relevant, you've seen what I've done, Fwapam. kind of a three-game stretch. That could be just enough to get the job done. My second place team, as much as I talked about them during the group preview, I, I I can't let my heart go completely away from the Blue Samurai. I, I've got Japan coming in a close second. Poland, I've got just missing out in third, and I've got Senegal in last because, yeah, African teams, I don't see doing much of anything in this tournament. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm actually going to disagree with you here. I'm going to pick my second African team to go through along with Colombia because Senegal has one of the best defenders in the entire world anchoring their defense. Uh, They have an actually pretty good midfield that can cover them and some actually really athletic attacking players. And, I mean, Colombia, their triumphant at the top is going to be hard to stop for anybody. Cuadrado, James, and Falcao. And then you've got a terrific defense behind them. And, of course, David Ospina as well. So, for me, I think this might be one of those where, like, you could see, you know, a two-way tie with, like, five points or something like that. Or, or like, you know, six, five, four. Like, so many different combinations of points could happen in this group. It's, it's weird because, like, I don't really think that any of these teams are really better than the other teams. It's just what could happen on that day. Look, I think Poland has a terrific striker in Robert Lewandowski. I think he's going to win him a game. I, I think he's going to keep things close, but it's like it's him and who else? And I think that's a problem when you get into these kinds of tournaments. It's usually the team over the one player, unless you are a Messi or something like that, that just transcends soccer. And I don't think that's going to be the case with Poland. I think it's going to be Colombia first. Senegal second, Poland third, and Japan. I love everything that involves Japan. I eat sushi at least like once a week. I watch anime a bunch. I play your games. I I, I hate it. I hate saying this. I'd love for the Japan men to come close to what the Japan women have been able to do. But it's it's just not going to happen. Uh, especially not with this squad. So, yeah, Japan's in last. Oh. oh, I'm going to go with Eric here and sigh because I have Colombia in first. Thomas Rodriguez, that's all I'm saying. They're just, they're a complete team. I could even see them making noise in the knockout stages. I have Japan in second because I just think if there's a true, I mean, there is a dark horse in Iceland, of course, but like their group is like so open as we've talked about that you can just see them upsetting. Like there's no set winner in said group. This group, I think everyone has kind of just put Japan off to the side. And I think that they're going to shock a lot of people. I think that they're going to make it in second place. Um, If I'm wrong, then Hey, I'm wrong. But at least if Colombia wins the group, I'm okay with that. Um, I have, who do I have in third place? I totally just lost my train of thought. I have Senegal in third place because I don't like Robert Lewandowski at all. I think his wife's annoying and her Instagram pictures aren't cute either. <laughs> <laughs> That's the girl thing of why I have this person in third. It's... Listen, it's not the entire girl thing. I just don't really care for him. I don't think they have a complete team. It's literally him and then that's it. There's just way too many question marks on this team. Yeah, you've got some guys in the Italian leagues. <laughs> Big whoop. Um, they're in last place for me because I just, at least Senegal has a few decent players around their midfield and defense. I just don't know. Sorry, Robert. And plus, this is my boo you for leaving Bayern Munich because you're crazy. Uh, yeah, 
So there, that's our group stage prediction. So I'm going to run through my knockout round here. Uh, and then uh, these two will as well. And we'll probably call it a day then. So here we go. I have Uruguay against Morocco. Uruguay wins. France defeats Nigeria. Brazil beats Mexico. Belgium defeats Senegal. That's that side of the bracket. Now into the quarterfinals, France beats Uruguay. Brazil beats Belgium. It's Brazil and France rematch of 98. Brazil gets revenge and goes to the final. On the other side of the bracket, I have Spain defeating Russia. I'm sorry, Rachel. None taken. Argentina gets the South American clash with Peru. Argentina wins. Uh, Germany defeats Switzerland. And then Colombia loses to England. As uh, sad as I would be about that. And I think I get my one upset here. England defeats Germany and gets in the semifinals. Spain defeats uh, Lionel Messi in Argentina, ending his wishes very early. And I think Spain, with their talent, end the Cinderella one of England and get into the final. It's a Brazil-Spain final, which could be really drab or just, you know, really great. And I think Brazil gets their revenge and goes and wins a sixth World Cup. And France wins third place over England, by the way. All right, Rachel, you're up. Oh, boy. Here's where all the upsets come in. Let's do this. This is going to be grand. So on the left side of my bracket, I have Russia facing off against Morocco with the home country taking the victory, of course. I have France against Iceland with France narrowly edging Iceland. Brazil's going to take on Mexico, and I think it's going to be a tight one, but Brazil's going to win it. In Belgium versus Japan, I have Belgium winning it. Russia takes on France, but France tends to be too much, so they move on to the semifinals. Belgium and Brazil, I think it's going to be an interesting one, but I think Brazil's going to overpower. Brazil's going to make it to the finals by beating France. And then let's move on to the right. Egypt versus Spain. Spain's going to overpower them, even with Mo Salah back. Argentina versus Denmark. I wanted to pick Denmark because I love upsets, but I am going to stick with Argentina. Uh, Here's the first upset of the tournament, and I still don't know of the knockouts. Maybe not because I have Russia winning, but um, Germany and Costa Rica. This is for you, Mauricio. I have Costa Rica advancing. Giant killers again, Costa Rica. Costa Rica is just giant killing everywhere. Vamos. And I have Colombia edging out Panama. Um, Lord help me. I have Spain beating Argentina. And Costa Rica continuing their Cinderella run with a semifinals appearance against Spain. But that's where they will be. They will make Spain will make it to the finals, and then Brazil is gonna win the whole thing. Third place match, France and Costa Rica. Hell, why not go for it? Costa Rica's gonna win it. Oh my oh. god, Concacaf! What a moment! Costa Rica! What a moment! People are like, oh my god, these guys are so American. What the hell? Uh, so, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> you thought her bracket was strange. Wait until you get a load of mine. There's a surprise at the end. Left side of the bracket, I've got Uruguay against Portugal. As much as I love Ronaldo, bruh, this is the penalty that you have for having so many damn kids. Uruguay oh advances. What the hell? That's terrible. <laughs> Don't bring the kids into this. 
look, again, I love his son. It's like a mini him. But, dude, you know what you did. I could forgive you for leaving United, but I can't forgive you for your other shenanigans and everything going on. And believe me, I could get a lot worse. Anyways, France, Iceland. As much as I love you, Iceland, as much as I would love for the chant to keep going, it stops there. France moves on. Although, don't be surprised if that one goes into extra time. Brazil, Mexico. My favorite match of all of the 2014 World Cup. One of the only ones that ended up scoreless. I think this one also goes to extra time. Brazil moving on. England and Japan. Again, I love you, Japan. As much as I would love to potentially have an opportunity to collect on a bet from Kelly Shibari, England goes on. Quarterfinals. Uruguay, France. Upset alert. Uruguay takes this one. I think France, while they've got a good team, deep, talented, something about this tournament, there's going to just be that little bit of a hangover in the knockout stages. Brazil and England, they've had quite a few big clashes, albeit mostly in friendlies over the decades. Brazil goes on. Uruguay, Brazil in a South American clash. You can't bet against the Selecao. They get to the final. Right side of the bracket. Spain, Russia. Sorry, Rachel. The Red Fury moves on. Hey, that is so understandable. I would not want... I'm scared if that match actually happens. Absolutely terrified. And I also agree with Sean. I've got Argentina, Peru. I, I, I go with Messi taking that one there. Argentina advances. Germany, Serbia, the Mannschaft, you really can't go against them. Colombia, Belgium, I'm going to be eating a lot of waffles. Belgium advances in that one. Colombia, All Brexit, I have to Brexit, say Brexit. about you saying you can't pick against Germany, sure you can. Costa Rica's there. Nah. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait until you hear... My quarterfinals on that side. Spain, Argentina. I've got Messi pulling out one more little bit of magic. Argentina goes on. And remember what you just said about picking against Germany? I am. Belgium advances to the semifinals. All of us have Germany going out in the quarterfinal. I want to make that point. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And remember what I said about the craziness in brackets? I said, off air as we were doing this, I was debating between two teams winning it all. One of them's Brazil. The other one's Belgium. I have them in the final. Hmm. How could you? Oh, trust me. Oh, the world will... Not know what Did you do, take you my drink? Process of the Brazil Argentina final. Mm. I can't believe you just took my drink, Eric. Like this is crazy. Oh no! It gets even crazier. In the third place match, I have a very loose, very high scoring affair. Argentina taking it. The final. Oh boy, the final! I actually debated this. Oddly enough. We have seen so much bat crap craziness over the past couple of years in sports. Have we not? Yes. Have we not seen a lot of bat crap craziness we never thought we would expect in soccer? Yes. Yes, see. Well, throw another one onto that pile. I've got Belgium with arguably one of the biggest upsets in history. Bigger than 1950, even. Are you drunk? No. Well, Belgium definitely has the talent to do it. Uh, but, man, getting your heart broken in two successive World Cups. Woo. That's and Getting rough. one step further this time so you get even closer to that trophy. But no, 
Like I said, waffles for everyone. Who you have a third place game? Who wins? Uh, Argentina. Okay. I've got them beating Uruguay. Well, there you go, folks. Two Brazils and a Belgium against Brazil in the final. Oh, wow. That's going to be uh, some craziness. If Costa Rica gets all the way to third, I don't know, Eric. I feel like we also owe Rachel something if she, when she comes. You guys are going to like, oh, my gosh. Wow, I can't wait for Florida in November because you guys are going to owe me big time. Well, I can't <laughs> do much better than a drink and a cookie. I mean, my God. Well, technically I could, but that would require some intense negotiations. <laughs> we could, like, Jeez, I wasn't going that far. We could like, you know, pay for her dinner or something. I don't know. Uh, I don't. Yeah. So that's it. That's our World Cup predictions. Do you disagree? Do you agree? I probably disagree. <laughs> I mean, how many of you have Brazil getting to a final and either winning or losing? I'm sure there's many of you out there. I'm sure you Salasau fans uh, would love for that to happen. I'm sure many Germany fans are probably upset that Germany's getting out in the freaking quarterfinals. But, hey, we've seen it happen. Uh, But, I mean, this is what's great about the World Cup. We can make these predictions, and Rachel could be completely right and baffle everybody. Or we could – everything could happen chalk. Or, you know, crazy crap like Belgium getting to the final, like – you know, Eric or says. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, th- it's a tournament. This was what makes it fun, and it starts on Thursday morning here in the United States and Russia. That's like, you know, normal prime time or sort of almost prime time. And then three a days start on the fifteenth that Friday. Man, get ready. Lots of soccer is going to be on your television. Whether you want it or not, you're going to be watching it. It's going to be on Big Fox. It's going to be on Telemundo. It's going to be on FS1. You can watch it on all the apps, whatever. You know you're going to be watching it at work. You know you're going to be watching it at home. You know you're going to be watching the bathroom. Wherever the hell you are, you're going to be watching the damn fucking World Cup. And it's going to be awesome. And, well, we are super excited for it. Only days away. If you enjoyed what you heard here, if you want to just hate on us the whole time, I don't care. Hit subscribe, Soccer to the Max. And uh, hopefully you join us on this daily World Cup journey. You can subscribe to the W2 Network. You get everything else we do. We do other stuff besides soccer. We do football. We got fantasy football going on right now. We got wrestling. We got video games. E3 is happening right now. So you're going to get E3 pods all the way going crazy. Every press conference is going to be covered. So you're going to get that as well. And man, just just so much for you. We're going to be having written thoughts as well on the World Cup uh, predictions. So if you want to go read those, go to WTMNet.com. Go visit Last Word on Soccer for all of Rachel's ramblings over there. She does a terrific job over there supporting that side of Last Word on Sports. And yeah. Just, you're not going to miss anything if you hit uh, subscribe. It will will be worth your while. We'll have our final regular show. We focus on the American side of things. The last bits of tidbits and whatever heading into the vote for the 2026 World Cup deal. The last NWSL week and MLS week that we'll be covering until after the World Cup is over. All that stuff will happen on uh, Monday night. You might be hearing it Tuesday morning. And, well, yeah, like I said, get ready. Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern, here if you live in the U.S. You know what time it is, wherever it is you live around the world. Get ready. The Tournament of Tournaments is happening. Until Monday. And if you don't if you don't listen to the World Cup stuff, until sometime on Thursday night. We'll see you later, everybody. 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, 5 Hawaiian. Woo! Vamos, 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 Costa Rica! Orale!